I am so excited today to have in our conversation on Promising Me Only, my friend, Lori McCauley. Now, for some of you who don't know Lori, she is a wardrobe stylist, and her goal is to help women achieve their fashion goal. So Lori, I thank you so much for joining us on Promising Me Unleashed. Thank you, Jacqueline. I'm so happy to be here with you. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> you know, I feel like we're just we're just uh, back where we started from the very beginning. And so I want to kind of talk just a little bit about how we met. Well, uh, we started w- together at Bravo Health and we had a wonderful, wonderful team leader who was very talented at putting together just the right team. Right. And I always enjoyed that. So I always knew whoever she brought on. And then she brought you onto our team. And it was almost instant. I had so much going on in my life. So I was uh, oblivious to a lot. But um, I felt kind of an instant connection, or I, th- I felt like you were very welcoming mm-hmm. to me. Um, and, and that made me feel loved, if that makes any sense. From afar. <laughs> A little bit because yes. we didn't work together a lot, right? But uh, the but the small times that we had together meant a lot to me. Yes, and what was so beautiful about it? You and I, we started working together kind of towards the end. Um, I think you were brought on. Um, well, you were already there before I got there, um, and got promoted to another position, and so you were taking over. I think some of the territory that I had, um, mm-hmm. and we actually got together. And we scheduled uh, time to go to this particular account that we had in a nice little quaint city uh, in uh, south of Baltimore. And little did I know that I was going to meet the fashionista. Now, I knew when you were around the office, you were always dressed so ever so meticulously, so elegant, so beautiful. But I just never expected the way you showed up. (laughs) For that meeting, I was like, this girl is blowing me away. So while I'm there dressed in my, you know, work corporate blues, Lori shows up in this bad, and I mean bad as in good, yellow linen sack <laughs> dress that had two of the cutest pockets in the front. And the back kind of slipped down, dipped down a little bit in the back, kind of went a little lower than the front at the, at the hem of it. But then you popped it off with some cherry red shoes and a little purse that you had just draped on your uh, uh, at your elbow, ever so cute. I said, (laughs) look at this. I know (laughs) she has not shown up and shown out for this account, but it was one of the most beautiful things. I said, this girl really has fashion sense. And that was that was just the exterior of you. But inside was just as beautiful. So I thoroughly enjoy just working with you and and checking out what you were wearing, you know, coming into work from day to day. (laughs) So (laughs) that was probably one of the most memorable um, things about you that was so impressive, always so poised um, and yet elegant in your attire for work. So I knew when we decided to do this conversation called Panty Lines, Polka Dots, and Jelly Rolls, and when we finally reconnected, because we've had some years in between um, just kind of missing each other, but I knew immediately when we started talking and everything just came running back that Lori McCauley was the woman to talk to us about Panty Lines, Polka Dots, and Jelly Rolls. So here we are in our elegance. Now, let me just say, Lori is the reason why I have on this elegant hat. Why? I mean, look at her. (laughs) I had to show up in some way, but this is the Lori McCauley. So Lori, I just want us to just kind of dive right in. Um, Just tell me about your, your fashion journey. Like what propelled you to even go into this direction? To, to me, it seems natural, but you tell us what propelled you to kind of go into fashion. Well, if I could interrupt really quickly, uh, my jacket is in memory of that dress. It's a very wow. similar yellow mm-hmm. and accented with a red, because we can see this. Yes. <laughs> uh, red rose necklace um, in, in honor of that memory that you have that I, I just, I 
get so much joy from that. I'm so glad that that, that outfit brought joy. Does that make sense? It, it brought instant joy and it was so refreshing. It was like, this is the way people should show up every day just with the joy of living really, you know, mm -hmm. and then coming to work just feeling so comfortable, but yet so ready to take on whatever we were going to take on for the day. You were dressed mm -hmm. for it. <laughs> you were dressed right? for it. It was, um, but it was uh, coming from, well, it, I believe that God built in me a natural affinity for fashion. Mm -hmm. I enjoy clothes and I come by it honestly. I have got people in my history on both sides right. who also enjoyed clothes. So there's that, but it's also... A form of, I hate, well, I shouldn't, it's a form of ministry when you come at it from that, uh, from that direction, right. when you're thinking about blessing somebody with, uh, with what you're wearing, um, or what someone might enjoy seeing or what mm -hmm. might lift someone's spirits. It lifts our own, you know, cause I think, uh, clothing and fashion and style is there to serve us. It's just one more way that God uses to bless people through us. Right. And to bless us with the joy of enjoying it. Mm -hmm. But anyways, but yeah, I, um, I was born enjoying fashion at a very early age. I remember seeing a teenage girl walk by with uh, Gloria Vanderbilt jeans with the swan embroidered on them. <laughs> and I was a very little girl and I wanted those. And, um, and fashion was not something that was supported in my family, or at least not by my father was one who. Uh, thought it was frivolous and um, idolatry of a sort, wow. you know, it wasn't something. Now my mother, on the other hand, had secretly wanted to be a clothing designer and her grandmother had been a seamstress in New York city wow. in the early 1900s. Um, so my mother had been surrounded by some pretty things mm -hmm. in her early life, but she, um, when she came to find the Lord and, uh, and adopted my father's style of practicing religion um, mm -hmm. that kind of went by the wayside. But Jacqueline, <laughs> I um, <laughs> it never went away. Right. So my mother was very pleased when she could bring home Guru Animals brand mm -hmm. clothing for us as children because those were on the commercials. Right. <laughs> did not enjoy Guru Animals because <laughs> there were elastic waistbands on those pants. <laughs> It wasn't quite your style, huh? <laughs> I know. And I didn't feel very grateful, but hopefully I was gracious. I hope no. <laughs> my poor mother, <laughs> I, I remember red paper bag waist pants and wow. there might have been green ones too. Um, <laughs> I have red pants now and green pants now, but they right. don't they're fashionable them. now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what to put them with. <laughs> right. But anyways, but we didn't have much growing up. And my father was a youth minister, not paid very well. And the church did not believe that my mother should work. Wow. So she followed that mandate for several years until she decided that that wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. But um, we always had hand-me-downs. It was a relatively affluent church that I grew up in, in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so those folks would put trash bags of hand-me-downs. Um, together and give those to us. So we had a closet, a large closet uh, in the second floor of our home. My mother called it the grow into closet. Wow. And if we wanted clothes, there was never a clothing budget. So if we wanted clothes, we went into those trash bags <laughs> in wow. the closet. And that's how I learned to shop. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember feeling poorly about that. I don't remember feeling poor. Um, because that was the way that I got my clothes. I remember feeling creative. So I would dig through those, find what fits, find things that inspired me. And I would cut and tie dye and make outfits. And the funny thing is, is the kids at school thought that we were well off because they thought my clothes looked like something, you know, fashion might have cost some money. yeah, I was clueless. I was really clueless. But, um, but that's how I dressed myself growing up until I had my first job and spent all my money on clothes at the mall. <laughs> I think we all did that. We went through that. <laughs> right. Right. So in my working life, I just followed it naturally. I got jobs, you know, because I needed them. I needed to support, support myself and my son. And, um, so it was retail. Of course, that was natural for me. And I enjoyed the clothing, 
um, but didn't think much of it. And uh, after that, it was office jobs after I had my son so that I could have a nice stable schedule. And um, I was at, uh, and along the way, I would help people here and there, but I didn't ever feel like it was a formal thing. It was just kind of a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, someone would need something for a wedding or, um, or an event or just an overhaul of the wardrobe or call me up. What do you think of this? And so I did that. Well, while I was at Bravo and I was feeling that transition toward the end, I had had several people ask if I was a wardrobe stylist and Mm -hmm. could I help them? You know, people were coming up to you because they were observing you. They were watching. They were seeing how you put, um, you know, a bag together with a pair of shoes and the outfit and the shirt and the jewelry Um, And you're so much like my sister-in-law in in that regard, because she is also very well, she has the eye. And I think that's part of it. When you have the eye and you know what color combination goes with, with what. Um, And, and Lori, you know, as we're talking, I, I'm of course thinking back um, at your Pinterest site. Mm, yeah reboot beautiful I'm gonna come out of this hat for this because I'm telling you (laughs) (laughs) we'll go like this yeah that's beautiful that works all right yes so you know I um you know first of all when we actually started uh our conversation a while back because you know we reconnected after a couple of years uh and you took me to your website And then I hit that Pinterest button and I was immediately blown away. And so I need for you to tell uh, our viewers because they're not going to believe it. When they go to the site, it is amazing. Um, Tell them about how you came about coordinating that site. Um, Pinterest was very new at that time. And Mm -hmm. I was in the throes. I was very sick. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was the kind of sick where there were days I couldn't get out of bed. Um, and I felt like I was losing myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we all have those times when you're really sick or, um, or you're so, uh, busy with taking care of your home and your children or something of that nature or somebody Mm -hmm. else caregiving for parents. Now that we're at an age where that's becoming a thing. Um, it's so easy to become busy and completely uh, lose sight of your own self, uh, you taking point. care of yourself. Well, I was at a point where I could barely, get, I couldn't really even take care of myself. So I was looking for, not consciously, but I stumbled across this site and it was easy for me at the time mm-hmm. to just, if I was laying in bed, couldn't get up, couldn't do anything, I could still exercise my creativity. It was a way of identifying with myself and kind of preserving that. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a godsend in that moment because I don't know what might have happened. Um, It kept me going on days when there was nothing else I could do. Right. But it was, um, there was, I'm creative, but I'm not the sort of person who can make something from scratch with my hands. Mm -hmm. My mother can do it. I have a brother who can do it. Um, I can put things together that already exist, hence putting outfits together. I'll see things and be able to make relationships with those. But um, there was an art form early on. So I never had good scores in art classes. (laughs) Art classes? Remember when we had art classes? (laughs) Um, So, but there was one form that I really enjoyed and it was collage Wow! because you're cutting pictures out of magazines. So Mm -hmm. I loved that project. I remember it. I think I was in junior high Mm -hmm. and I was hoarding magazines wherever I could find them and cutting out photos of things that inspired me. A lot of it was fashion, but lifestyle and maybe a phrase here and there. Mm -hmm. And so Pinterest felt to me like collage. Wow. Um, And I remember, um, I remember vision boards becoming a thing and I had never had one, but it kind of turned into that of a sort, but then I could use my detail. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I like to organize things a little bit and um, I started to organize things by style because at first it was just anything I loved. And I love a lot of things, Mm -hmm. you know, you'll notice when you look at all the boards, there's a little bit of something for everybody. I hope. 
So I started this for me, Uh but um, I started to notice early on, you could see just like on Instagram, you could see who's following you. And when it was, when I was just starting and had a couple hundred, so I would notice Mm -hmm. the two or three new people who would follow me that day. And I would go take a look to see who they were. And so I started to pay attention to who it was. I stayed true to me and what I like. So I tried to make sure that everything I post, at least in that moment, is something I like or I'm inspired by. Right. Um, but I started to see that I was serving certain parts of um, certain demographics. Mm-hmm. And I was surprised as well at, at some of the demographics that were following me. Mm-hmm. And I thought this, this actually can be a service. Um, and one of the challenges I had found in styling people, my niche is helping somebody who um, really is intimidated by shopping um, yes. has really lost sense or never had a sense of what they enjoy because they've completely blocked that part of themselves. Mm-hmm. We do it so often for whatever reason we, we tend to um, feel like oh, I shouldn't know what I like for, you know, there's a lot of dysfunction. And so um, I feel like there's a a form of therapy and healing involved in getting in touch with what do you like? Because if you like something, God made you Mm -hmm. in such a way that you would like that. And if he made you that way, it's in service for something. It's a testament even to um, this discussion, because we're talking about panty lines, polka dots, and jelly rolls. But there is something that causes those panty lines, polka dots, and jelly rolls. And it's what goes on on the inside or underneath. (laughs) Mm -hmm. What lies beneath. What (laughs) lies beneath. Oh, and what lies, if we want to play word games, turn (laughs) turn off the volume on my phone. Um, Yes, because uh, a lot of that mess inside is coming from lies. So when we start talking about panty lines, polka dots, and jelly rolls, what does that look like? What does that look like? And I share with you, you know, the event that happens here, and it may happen across the United States. There's an event where uh, women and men who are invited uh, emerge in these secret locations, and they sit, they have dinner. Uh, It is a wonderful event. Everyone is wearing white. We eat, talk, music, there's dancing, there's singing. It's very festive. But I began to observe how we women were in our white. The best outfits. I know, I know some of those tags, those locations where some of those outfits came from. Beautiful outfits. But I noticed that the undergarments were not accentuating the outfit to its greatest potential. And so, you know, I began to look at, um, you know, just observe, you know, we women, we look at each other, we check each other out, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And we can see panty lines and white shows up things quite easily. It shows Uh, everything. (laughs) There's no hiding. (laughs) Say what, Lori? (laughs) There's no hiding. (laughs) There's no hiding when you wear white. There really Mm -hmm. is not. So, you know, we observe the, the, the panty lines and then we move to polka dots. Uh, but Lori, I believe you really explained it to me in a way that i had never heard it before uh, as it pertained to cellulite. Mm-hmm. You want to oh, go yeah. into any detail about that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, white shows that more than any other color. But yeah, if you've got cellulite happening, then the white, if there's, uh, if your clothing is clinging to your skin at all, it will show everything, everything, everything. which, you know what? I love to see women who embrace their cellulite because we all have it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how skinny that girl is over there. She's got it mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I really appreciate women who rock, you know, really enjoy their bodies and they wear what they want. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, sometimes it's not attractive. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want you to hide your light, but at the same time, eh, if you're thinking about it, if you don't love that look, then yeah, we need to smooth that out. But yeah, yeah I, white requires um, some scaffolding underneath. Right. right. <laughs> well, let me get to the last one mm-hmm. and then we can kind of go back to talk about those things that will help. So jelly rolls, 
Now, somebody says, well, what's a jelly roll? Well, it's really that back, the fat on your back that has several lines. Um, you know, it, it is extra. It's the, the extra that kind of exists on our bodies. And I say our bodies, my body uh, can be very personal about this. I do have a few jelly rolls. I lose them when I lose weight and I gain them back when I gain the weight back. <laughs> Um, but you know, and the goal is to try to look as trim and firm as we can. I know all body types and body shapes are different. So no body shaming at all. I just know that when it comes down to our attire, and I personally look at this for myself when I'm dressing, I want to make sure I have a smooth back, right? So that whatever I'm wearing, it just fits me nice and smooth. Um, and these are personal preferences. Somebody might be very well okay with it, but others might say, oh, maybe I can do something with that. And that's why a wardrobe stylist like our Lori McCauley can give us tips and ways that we can make the beautiful outfits that we want to wear present on us as beautifully as they can. So Lori, just kind of give us an, an idea about... Mm -hmm the necessities for the appropriate undergarments, mm -hmm. not just from the physical perspective, but also from our spiritual perspective. Mm -hmm. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to start from the practical. Um, first of all, everything that we wear underneath a light color, especially white, needs to be the same color as our skin tone. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think it's a white garment, I should wear white undergarments underneath it, or it's a black garment, I should wear black. That's not always true. If you can see through it at all, especially if there's uh, flashes from cameras, mm -hmm. um, even uh, they'll show through black. So it's good to find something that matches your skin tone. Yeah. And thank you, God, there are actually options now. It's not just beige and black. Yeah, we love um, the dude. <laughs> I know. We've got several shades in between, and I'm really thankful for that because it was kind of leaving a decent por portion of the population out of that conversation of having good, uh, a good foundation under your clothing. Right. So first match your skin tone. Second thing we want to do, practically speaking is to size up, um, especially where panty lines are concerned. But mm -hmm. when we're talking about the smoothing garments, try on bigger than what you think you should try on because anywhere that the edge of the garment, the undergarment, digs into your skin is going to create a line that you'll see through your clothing, especially if your clothing is next to your skin or kind of tight. Um, so that's where we get our panty lines. So actually, if you hate wearing Spanx type, um, you know, girdle mm -hmm. um, foundations, sometimes you can fix most of your issues by just wearing larger panties that don't cut into uh, and don't cut into your flesh. Because I've got girlfriends who cannot handle the tight stuff underneath their dress. Um, so that'll fix a lot. Same thing goes for bras. Mm -hmm. um, we need the support, especially if you have anything to support. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a tough one because in order to get the support on that horizontal band going mm -hmm. underneath your bust line, it's got to be tight. Right. So that's where we get those jelly rolls accented. And I, again, have seen very thin women, especially when we get to a certain age who have that. There's just, you're just going to be fleshy there unless you are rock hard, really buff. And even that's not always attractive. So mm -hmm. there are some lines if you try on a lot of things um, where they cut the back of the bra um, in such a way to kind of disperse um, the flesh and the skin so that it's not all bunched up in one spot. So you try several things on, but if you have a great bra that you love, then just get one of those all over smoothers, mm -hmm. you know, that goes, it's not attractive when you take everything off, mm -hmm. but it makes everything on top of it beautiful. And it's a strong foundation. Right. Um, and I love that analogy that we um, talked about before where you've got something gorgeous on top and then it's just a hot mess underneath yeah. old, you know, old undergarments because we haven't taken the time to, you know how it goes. If nobody sees it, we think it doesn't need to be updated. We think it's okay. Yeah. It, like we think it's okay. 
what blew my mind when I first started to um, research lingerie, because I was that girl who wore the, I had two bras, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> And that was and, it. <laughs> yeah. And I wore it for several days. And was that a black it. one and a white one? or <laughs> Probably. You had one to wear and one to wash. I mean, you know what I mean? And um, Or wear, wearing your panties for five years in a row if your size didn't change. Right. I, mean, I had no clue. And I, just like sneakers, um, I learned that you're supposed to update your bras like every six months if mm -hmm. you're only wearing two or three of them, right. um, which is crazy because they're so expensive now. Exactly. But, um, so I know that a lot of us don't think about updating our lingerie because no one sees it. We can't imagine why we should spend money on that, but it makes a big difference, um, not only in the way it's performing for us, but what it does with our, our hearts and our spirits. When we know we're wearing something beautiful that's supporting us, again, it's that um, it, it seems like it it shouldn't be a big deal, but it really makes a difference for us because when we feel beautiful and we feel like uh, we've taken care of ourselves, it's just another self-care yeah. aspect. And you've um, been on the outside. Yes, right, right. So, you know, when you think about, okay, maybe we think no one's going to see what's underneath there, but it comes out in the way that we carry ourselves, in the, in the way that we expect people to treat us. Have you seen that? Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a moment of self-respect, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, saying God made me. So I'm supposed to be here. God loves me because he made me. Um, he does not want me to treat myself like a piece of trash. Think about the analogy of our undergarments kind of like being our quiet time or our meditation mm. or, you know, our personal time with God mm -hmm. um, that, you know, if you start your day with that or end your day with that or both, however it is that you set up your spiritual life to maintain um, what makes you feel strong and supported. Um, it, it, there's that analogy. It makes everything else work really well. You know, we, we, and it's amazing how these, these two um, correlations are, are so closely aligned, our spiritual life and how we show up and in, in our physical life and our attire and how we show up. And it has everything to do with what's going on on the inside. Everything. And can we talk about, I don't know why it feels important, but can we talk about how people respond to us? Now, I firmly believe that we should dress in a way that feels true to ourselves. Yes. Um, but you know, uh, sometimes we don't realize that people respond to us and treat us differently based on how we look and how we dress. So yes. I don't want us running around trying to dress in such a way that we're pleasing other people uh, and neglecting ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. But at the same time, um, when you notice the difference, when you upgrade um, how you're presenting yourself, an upgrade can mean anything. It doesn't mean class. It doesn't mean um, culture. It means whatever you did to become more celebratory of the way that you were created. Yeah. Um, you'll notice people respond differently. Um, and it kind of opens favor. Um, I think I mentioned to you before, I, I had so many way, reasons for dressing the way I dressed at work. Mm -hmm. I loved that I could dress for work. Um, but it was often I was uh, dressing something that I would love, but also for my audience mm -hmm. but to help me accomplish whatever my goal was for the day. Um, but I had learned at a very early age that people treated me differently based on the way I looked. And so I was sensitive to that and learned how to kind of manipulate that um, to accomplish certain goals. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we talk about our undergarments and from a practical standpoint, when you upgrade that to become, become something very supportive of what you're putting on the outside, makes a big difference in our posture, yeah. um, the way we carry ourselves, even if it's um, not so much the physical support of the garment, but just how we feel in it. Mm -hmm. um, but also when we look smooth and put together, we don't look trashy. Right. I mean, you can have the most demure looking dress mm -hmm. over top of all the wrong lingerie mm -hmm. and it doesn't present well, mm -hmm. you know? So um, the way people receive you and it's important to think about that mm -hmm. to some degree anyways, especially mm -hmm. when you're trying to accomplish things in life. If we want to talk about it from a people perspective, 
people see you before they hear you. Yes. So how you show up um, is very, very important. It's just like a resume, you know, how you present on that resume is all that that person knows about you before they actually talk to you. So you want to make sure you show up right on that resume. Um, and so as it relates to our undergarments and, and making sure that we're presenting ourselves where, uh, 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 well, no matter you know, what the circumstance is, we need to take that time you know, to make sure that we have all those pieces together. I'll never forget, I was doing, um, I was being awarded something and I thought, I thought I had the baddest dress on. I thought I looked good, but I, then I saw the pictures <laughs> uh. and I realized, oh my goodness, I didn't look as good as I thought I did, you know, and I might've started out good, but again, back to those undergarments. You got to make sure that they're going to hold you for the night. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about preparation. You know how our lives have blown up a lot recently. And um, and uh, someone made a comment when I went to, into work based on what I was wearing uh, one day because they knew uh, the things that I was struggling with. And they were like, how did you have time to put that outfit together? I said, if I'm telling the truth, my entire wardrobe is built where it takes me no more time to put on a cute outfit than a yucky one. Wow. So I don't own, you know, I've got things that I wear to take care of my dog, which mm -hmm. is not my regular wardrobe, but it really doesn't take any more time. If you've built your wardrobe in such a way where you clean out the things that aren't serving you, mm. um, you know, if you can't just pick up anything out of that closet and wear it now, okay. I, my sidebar will be that <laughs> At this age, I might be five pounds heavier tomorrow than I am today right. and vice versa. So I do have different sizes mm -hmm. in my wardrobe, but I should be able to pick up any outfit and put it on and it will serve me. But um, I love what you said, that if you have it prepared already, it doesn't take much time. Yes. The, right? is, the time is in getting to that point. Yes, it is an investment. Yeah. And I think time. say that again. It is an investment of time. Uh, it can be a, an investment of money unless yeah. you shop the way that I shop. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that just briefly time. too, um, because I know that you are a, uh, a boutique. Um, I don't know if, if high end consignment is the yes. word. Or I love what we would call vintage. And uh -huh. when I, when you and I were coming up, we probably called vintage stuff from the forties and fifties. Right. Um, it was very period specific and it looked like, you know, you stepped out of the forties and fifties. I love vintage meaning that, um, that somebody else owned it, that there's a history behind it. And it might just be five or 10 years old, mm -hmm. but I love that. Or secondhand. I'm, I'm passionate about it. I think it's great for the environment yeah. to recycle our clothing that way mm -hmm. and the stories, you know, and reworking things in such a way that maybe nobody knows that what I have on is 40 years old. Right. You know, it might look like something of the moment today. It's a lot of fun. It's mm -hmm. a hobby. <laughs> but it but yeah, I do enjoy that. Thank you. Yeah, so vintage St. John, and this is vintage Oscar de la Renta runway. This wow. necklace here, and then that's probably just like a t shirt from some place like Walmart or something of that nature. <laughs> I mean, we, we mix it, but yeah, who would have known? <laughs> I know, nobody you, would know. You can go from Walmart to Saks Fifth, yes, ma'am, all in the same sentence, yes, and put together an awesome outfit you know an awesome ensemble you and I talked a little bit because I shared with you that I bought some shoe clips out of um what is it a white house black market and I showed them to you and in showing them to you you gave me the name of who makes these things um I can't even remember the designer at this point yeah but you I know now them. say that again you made something that looked like Manola Blahniks. <laughs> well, I made <laughs> something that looked like that. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. But, um, you know, who I wouldn't have known that. I am not one who really, really knows all the names of designers. There's so many 
Um, but to know that I am picking up things that are, um, you know, akin to uh, a designer that looks like designer that I know is going to show up well when I wear it. I, yeah. I like knowing those things. Well, I love the idea that we can, in, 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 in service to, again, the way we're made, Mm -hmm. Um, I love high end things. I love designer fashion and not just for the label. I love the artwork mm -hmm. that goes into it. I love the handwork that goes into it. I love the story behind their inspiration, but the, what happens is when you're wearing uh, these things, if you're wearing things that really serve who you are, you're going to attract people, uh, it, with a similar bent, which I think, um, ends up being of service mm -hmm. uh, spiritually and sociologically speaking, um, because that must be the crowd that we're meant to participate in. That's the crowd we're meant to serve. That's the crowd that will serve us. Um, and I think that those things all kind of go together. But the, the thing is, I don't have a huge budget. I like designer things. I don't have a huge budget. So I do have a way to have access to the things that I enjoy. Um, but just like uh, somebody else might love to be covered in tattoos and piercings and shredded clothing and whatever, and that brings them joy mm -hmm. and that makes them feel like they're true themselves. And they're going to have a crowd of people around them in a similar milieu and they will be serving each other. And I kind of feel like that's the way it should be. If our mission is to love our neighbor as ourself, let's start there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to unpack in that statement. First of all, it says, love your neighbor. We, we all know that. And so fashion is a way that we can love each other mm -hmm. um, and put ourselves in the position to love each other. But it says, as yourself. That blew my mind when that finally sunk in. I was like, God wants me to love myself. I was taught not to do that, that that was not, hum you know, humility means that I don't and that sort of thing. But the way that I blossomed as I learned to love myself and the way that you blossom as you learn to love yourself. I think that was, um, I remember that outfit uh, exuded joy for me. And I remember telling you, I think I, my speaking style is very casual. Mm -hmm. My presentation is very casual. Mm -hmm. So I've always compensated for that with, especially in a business setting with something very professional looking to balance me out. Um, and I feel like in certain cultures, you might feel like you need to do that as well um, to make sure that the outside looks super polished mm -hmm. to compensate for whatever else that people might be holding against you. Um, right. So, um, but so that's what I did. So that outfit was, um, there was no jacket, if you right. remember. There was no blazer. So it was I, a told you, I was in dress blues. I mean, I, I was ready for business. <laughs> yes, you were. And um, so I remember feeling risky because there was no jacket. It was um, it was uh, very, very ladylike and it was loud. Um, yeah. There was no hiding in that dress, but something about it spoke to me mm -hmm. and felt like the right. I don't even remember who the client was. Mm -hmm. I do, um, but I won't say it. <laughs> okay. But some, somehow I intuitively felt like that was the way to present for them, for my, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, I just didn't deviate from the norm. That was just, you know, I showed up that way, even if we weren't going out on appointments. That was just the norm for, for me. Um, but it was such a beautiful outfit. And one, as I said, that I will never forget because it brought joy to me. Uh, okay. And back to that point of, you know, being in someone's company that brings you joy. Even if it's their outfit that's part of that joy. That was what was so impressive and memorable for me. And then you just being the beautiful person that you are, mm -hmm. it was Thank just you. wonderful, you know, even then in our short space of time then, which I know from now, it's now till eternity, that you and I will always be connected at the hip as sisters, as friends, um, and then to see you in the space of business that I know anyone who um, has the opportunity to speak with you and to work with you are really going to enjoy the benefits of your advice um, as it relates to wardrobe styling. 
So Lori McCauley, I just want to thank you so much. I know we talked about Pinterest. How else can people get in contact with you? Um, my email is info at lorimcauley.com. It's L-O-R-I-E-M-C-C-A-U-L-E-Y.com. And feel free to email if you've got questions and I'm happy to help. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Lori McCauley. And we thank you for joining us on Promise in Me Unleashed. Thank you. Thank you.